I'm Lisa Berry. Arlene Schofield. My name is Shireen Snow. My name is Carla A. Miles. Diana Camuto. This is Christine Dunford. And me, Eden. Charlie Macy. This is Walker Fannin. Buddy, I'm Camille Dixon. I'm Miss Dates Warden. My name is Linda Preston, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 429. I'm here with the beautiful and talented Teresia. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Keith, and thank you for having my son, Jadison, too. <laughs> no, absolutely. I do have one request for you. Is there a way you can turn the screen sideways so we can get the full screen? Sure. There you go. Much better. <laughs> And now for people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even if having a warning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, and he's agreeing with me, <laughs> and at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of warning disabilities and disabilities. But you should never give up and you should prove people along. Show them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And show you to break the labels. And show them you can step out to something. So that being said, a half hour of your time. And starting off, what can you tell us about yourself? Well, as you know, my name is Trinicia Purnell. Um, I'm an actress. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two amazing boys. One three-year-old and this guy here is four months old. Um... I live in California, pursuing acting, and um, my favorite color is yellow. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned you're from California. What part of California are you from, and have you gotten used to the earthquakes? Well, I've been, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been living in California for 12 years now. I live in Burbank, California, so it's like right outside of L.A., and... I've been here when there's been just the little earthquakes, not a big one. They died. Um, so yeah, the little one's not so bad, you know. Hopefully I, I never lived through a big one. Or I shouldn't say lived through it. I want to live through it, but I don't want to be here when it happens. <laughs> hey, yeah, I didn't know if you caught the jester I was doing. I just saying uh, he has a little weekends going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the joys of having kids, right? That, hey, that's right. That's right. That's how it goes, huh? <laughs> what about, so I'm going to ask you some easy questions, then some hard-hitting ones, and then I'm going to take a break, okay. and then you can ask me anything you want. Don't hold back. Do I want you to just go full throttle with it? So the first question I was going to ask you is, when you were in college, were you a study nerd, a party animal, and did you do any <laughs> sports? <laughs> well, when I went to college... I did uh, one year of junior college, and I was a study animal. It wasn't so much a party animal. And then I, when I moved to California, I had to get my bachelor's degree strictly online. Um, I went to Northern Arizona University. They had a distance learning program. Um, so I was here pursuing acting and working and just doing my degree online. So unfortunately or fortunately, I didn't really have um, the full-on party animal college experience because I wasn't there, you know, at a dorm, um, being able to take part in all that. I was here in L.A. focused on building my acting career and doing my degree online. So, but it was awesome. I don't, I don't regret it. It gave me a chance to do what I want to do, which is be in California, pursue acting, and also get my degree. So, it was a win-win for me. No, absolutely. And now... Going back four years, for people who want to know, you were kind enough to help me do my demo years. So it's great to have you back on the show once again. 
Oh, well, thank you. You're, you're so very welcome. I appreciate you asking me to do the show. Yeah, I appreciate it. And now the next question I was going to ask you is one more easy question, then we can go to the hard-hitting ones. Is, did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids, or are you not into the whole human pyramid stuff? What? I don't even know what a human pyramid is. Tell me about it. It's basically a group of people come together to climb on top of each other and they form a shape of a pyramid. Oh, oh. Um, well, you know what? I, when I was a cheerleader in high school, we did sort of like that. You know, we do stunts and, you know, you have to put girls up in the air and... My freshman year, I was a flyer, so I was the girl on top. And then my sophomore, junior, senior year, I was the bait. So I was one of the girls on the bottom lifting other girls up. So I guess sort of. <laughs> I always think it would have been funny if you guys make comments to each other while you're doing the pyramids, while you're holding the second one, waiting for the third one to get up there. It's like, hey, honey, game and get in a little weight. Or they are you a bit clumsy? <laughs> or just, they have some fun with it. <laughs> well, believe me, there was plenty of fun to be had being a cheerleader and uh, definitely doing the stunts and everything. We, yeah, it's pretty silly. <laughs> and you're stunning, Grace. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is who influenced you to start your acting career? And for the biggest one out there, was there a lot of stereotypes out there? Were you ever stereotyped? Or do you, or are you one of those people that says, you can stereotype me, but I'm going to show you I can break the label. It's kind of like what I'm doing. It's because I was uh, labeled as handicapped, you know, and all those other things. But I'm showing you labels don't dictate. So the question I'm asking you is, when you started your acting career, did you have to go for the whole stereotyping? And also, who influenced you? Yeah, that's such a great question, Keith. Um, so first, who influenced me? When I was eight, I watched this movie called Serafina. And if you haven't seen it, and if the listeners who are listening to the show or watching the show haven't seen it, everybody needs to see it. It's an amazing movie. It's beautiful. And um, the star actress in that movie, her name is Lee Letty. I think that's how you pronounce it. She's African, so I'm not really sure. But... Um, I saw her in the movie and I just, that's, that's what I knew. That's what I wanted to do. She's amazing and beautiful and graceful and it just, she inspired me. So I wanted to be like her and that's how I knew I wanted to be an actress. And then, um, yeah, of course I feel like, you know, all of us have to deal with stereotypes no matter what they are. You know, we all have to face, um, adversity at some point and have to figure out how do we overcome it. Um, obviously being, you know, African American when I first moved to Los Angeles and then the auditions I were getting, of course, weren't like, you know, showing African Americans in a positive light, you know, it was a little bit of the demeaning roles, you know, like prostitutes and things like that. And I was younger, obviously, then, so some of that has to fall into age range, but it also has to fall with race and how sometimes the world can view you a certain way and you have to encourage them to see you the way that you really are, which means I don't just play a prostitute. I can play a doctor or a lawyer or all of these things. And yes, a prostitute, right? Because obviously every type of job comes in all different races, right? Yeah. But to hold anybody to that one group of, um, you know, what they think that person should fit, you know, we all have to be careful in that way and be mindful of each other and, you know, help each other reach our fullest potential and open up doors for one another and, you know, help see each other in that light that we want to be seen, you know. I don't want to be seen just as the prostitute. I want to be seen like, you know, I could do all these important jobs too. So, absolutely, it's a constant battle, just like, you know, I'm sure it is for you to just remind people that you're capable and worthy, you know. And in this industry, it's really challenging, but it's the same way, you know. We're all trying to stand out. We're all trying to um, get people to see our own uniqueness and don't, you know, love us all in one group because we all are special and we all bring something to the table. No, absolutely. And I want your opinion on this one. You say your boss said to you, and you know, in my case, I like, I work in retail. You know, I do that for a hobby. And I, I'm sad, but I enjoy be doing what I'm doing. I'm the only one that wants to be at the job. Won't mention the name of the job. But 
You go in the back. I want your point on this. You go in the back and say, you know, I, I like being here. I'm, I am will never quit. I, I will only leave unless you fire me, you know, otherwise <laughs> you're not going to get rid of me. And he <laughs> says to you, uh, what is your point? I said, well, the point is you have people who you just hire right off the street and you're teasing them how to do returns and everything that management does. But I've been here for 11 months and you didn't teach me shit. Excuse my language. You didn't teach me crap. <laughs> or poopy or whatever. Sorry. And it, it's kind of like, how can you say, I've been here for 11 months, you're not teasing me, but you just hired this. Can I, if, if I may, use your son for an example. You just hired her son. It's like, okay, we're going to teach you management, management thing. I'm like, he said, you just brought him in, but I've been here for 11 months. It's kind of like, where's the logic? And basically, right. what I'm trying to get at, he said, well, what do you are, what are you trying to say? I said, I want to learn, you know, how to do returns. Because, okay, when I worked at Target, I did returns. When I did, um... When I worked at Hus Puppies, I did returns. When I worked at North Face, I did returns. For whatever reason is, at this store, I, I can't do returns. And he said to me, and I quote, you will never, ever do a return in this store. So with that being said, if you were in my position, what would you have done? Yeah, you know what? That's a tough one. And... Uh... No, I think I would have took a moment and maybe asked to speak with him, you know, in private. No, this was not um, private. Sure. Oh, it wasn't private. Okay, good. You know, because sometimes when other people are around, people yeah. get, like, they want to show you who's boss, you know. So, if it, it's in private, then I would have just said, you know, well, why is your reasoning for saying I would never do a return? Because if you're nervous because of what makes me a unique, special individual is going to limit me, you know, I assure you it will not, you know, if I were you, Keith, that's what I would have said. Like, I assure you I have the same capacity to learn these things, learn how to do the return, learn how to do the management training, and maybe it'll take a little bit longer than you teaching someone else, or maybe it won't, yeah. but we don't know. Try. And I would love the opportunity to show you that I am capable and I'm willing and I'm excited about learning how to do these things. So if you can just give me a chance, I promise you won't be disappointed. No, oh, I agree with you. And I didn't mean to complain to you. I do apologize. Oh, no. No reason to apologize. I mean, that must have been a frustrating situation. And especially, you know, it sounds like the tone that he used, you know, could be a little bit disrespectful. And I always just try to remind myself personally, when somebody's being disrespectful to me, my first gut reaction is then to be disrespectful to them. Yeah. And so we have to like take that moment, take that breath, and always remain kind and remain respectful in order so I can get the things that I want, you know? Because if we just shoot right back sometimes, we end up saying something that kind of hurts the situation further instead of helping it, you know? And in the end, what you want to do is you want to be able to make returns and you want to learn some of that management training. So, you know, if we answer in a abrupt tone, it can hurt your chances, right? So I always try, and I don't succeed all the time, but I try to remind myself, you know, even when somebody's being disrespectful to me, to show love and kindness and respect to them. Because in the end, it'll work out for me, you know, and I believe that about you. You're a kind individual, and in the end, it'll work out for you. No, oh, I agree with you. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is, what were some, uh, your, I know we're talking about retail, but we can always get back to that later on. By going back to the same focus on the talk show, is um, when I don't do my interviews that way, I kind of have like a brain fart. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> I was going to ask you is, what were some of your favorite films that you did? And for people who want to follow in your footsteps, what were the steps you took? You know, did you use Facebook to get where you are? Did you use Twitter? Did you use Stage 32? So the first question is, what were the steps? And the second question is, what were some of your favorite films you were a part of? So, oh my gosh, to 
tell someone the steps. The crazy thing, the maddening thing, the exciting thing about this industry is there are no steps. <laughs> We're all just out here trying to put some pieces together to make something happen, you know. So there's no rule book in acting. So honestly, it's one of the most frustrating things. You know, most things like you can go to school for such and such years, you know, go get an internship and then you can find yourself in that job. Well, acting's, you know, all of that and none of that, you know. Acting is the career of do everything and do nothing all at the same time, you know. So, but just some helpful tips that I think that can serve anyone who's pursuing acting is, obviously, you need to get into acting class. You need to learn how to act. Um, so many people think it's just a gift and they were just born with it and la di da la da That's not true. <laughs> Maybe you have an inkling to something, you know, inclination to be a little gifted in the area of acting, but without training and knowing how to do it, because acting is on call, you know, it's like you're sitting around, you're talking, you're eating when you're on set, you're, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden now it's time to do the big shot and you, you know, you need to be whatever your character needs to be and you have to be able to do it like that, you know? So that's why the training comes into hand because... You literally just have to be ready and prepared at any moment with acting. So being in a class and learning what it is to be in acting, that's number one. If you don't do that, nothing else even matters. If you're not trained, you're not good. You know, and the reason and how you get good is practice, 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 train, train, train. So when your opportunity comes, you're ready. Um, and then also, you know, move out to California or move to those places where there's other actors around because that's how you're gonna learn what works and what doesn't work. And what works for someone else may not work for you. So that's why it's important to kind of be in that community of actors because you can bounce ideas off of each other and you're just surrounded by like-minded individuals as far as acting is concerned. So you guys can, you know, lift each other up and keep each other positive when things aren't going so well, you know. You have to get an agent and manager to help you get auditions because to get the auditions that count, you don't, you can't get those on your own. Um, it's definitely about meeting people and you know who you know to an extent um but just putting yourself out there so you can be in the right place in the right opportunity so when it comes you can be ready um yeah i feel like those are some kind of steps that you know first steps to, to take um and see movies and projects that i've been involved in um uh, well one of my first like big breaks was a movie called seated run with um kel mitchell and that was just awesome because it was my first movie, number one, and it was my first, like, big part. So um, I'll always remember that because that was a uh, really awesome experience. And then I also did a film called Life on Earth, and it was an AFI uh, school thesis project, and I got picked as the lead in that film. And that also was so memorable to me because it was really rewarding to finally feel like, oh, somebody sees, you know, my hard work and give me the opportunity to be a lead in this film. And I just grew so much over that process. I learned what it was like to be on a movie set and all of these things that I'm talking about, you know, having to be prepared, having, you know, my lines prepared, having my character ready, knowing who she was inside and out so that when I'm on screen, I can portray her um, honestly to the best of my ability. So. No, absolutely. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to pass the show over to you. Okay. So then, me, Mark Medley. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Neely. Barry Papik. This is Peter Bruno. My name is Kyle Collier. This is Julio Santiago, uh, better known as Dynamite. I'm Richard Epcar. Our shout. This is Gary and Mayhan. And this is Golder. And we both support Keith Andrew. My name is Ron Wasserman, and I am supporting Keith Andrew and what he is doing, and you better do the same, or I'm going to come kick your ass. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 429. Now with the last 12 minutes left to the show, I'm going to pass it to you. You can ask me anything you want. Gloves off. Don't hold back. You know, go for the throw if you like. <laughs> I, you know, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> okay, Keith, so now that I get to interview you, first off, I would like to say how exciting it is working with you and what a great experience this has been. And I think first I would like to ask you, what is your aspiration? What is it 
that's kind of driving you to put together this talk show and to like what is this serving? What does this do for you in in order putting together these talk shows with individuals? All right. Well, one, it helps me with my people skills. Um, I a lot. Of, I've been told that I have poor people skills. I'm socially awkward. I suffer from depression and social anxiety. So doing the interview, it's given me the confidence of walking up to people and introducing myself. You know, when I worked over at North Face, I had to like the badge. That's why I guess my voice, sorry. <laughs> so when I worked over at North Face, I had the badge. So I had an excuse to walk over. To, if you wanted my store, I had an excuse to walk over to you. Compared to when we were kids and we were growing up, I always had a fear of being rejected because I was different. So you can't compare me now to then. Now that I'm doing the show, it gives me the confidence of saying, I am talk show host. I feel great about myself. I, if we go back 10 years ago, I'm just a pimple kid and I have social anxiety and I'm not who I am. So it, it's basically a, a booster for myself. Just saying, that show people you're not going to be the same person and you got to think outside the box. That's awesome. I, I couldn't agree more about thinking outside the box and showing people that, you know, there's more than meets the eye sometimes because they can't see past it. But we know what we're capable of. So good for you, Keith. So also, let's see, where do you see yourself in, let's say, you know, five, ten years from now, Keith? What is your goal? You know, it's funny. Uh, you use my mom for a, a reference. Uh, five years, well, this June, uh, funny enough, will be five years for my talk show. So going back five years hey. is that, well, thank you, we'll pat on my back for that. <laughs> five <laughs> years ago, when I told my mom about the show, she said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. And you may get one or two people. She never thought I would get, you know, Thanks to you, back up to 429. And, yeah. you know, um, to make a long story short, uh, a lot of people say you're not copyrighted, you're not trademarked, so now I do the permission forms. When I first did the show, I was taking people at their word. And widow by widow, they were making idle threats to me, we're going to sue you. Uh, my agent said, my publicist said, we don't like the video quality because I was... Recorded from the screen, so what you see on the screen is what the camera got. And now it's Skype recorder. It's got to be cut in half. I'm on the right, you're on the left. Or when you interview me, you're on the right and I'm on the left. So you see over, you know, four and a half years, a transition. But the biggest thing, I I went to a senior advisor, so I was a lawyer, and he said your biggest mistake was you don't have a permission form. So now I have... This is season five. I have five binders filled of 100 interviews that I got permission for. So it's once you sign it, I don't give a damn what you say. You make idle friends. <laughs> it's a done deal. It's in black and white. I introduce myself. I tell you what the show's about. And you sign it, either handwritten or online, saying you have permission to use the interview as long as it's not discriminating against you and me. So, unfortunately, then right. I didn't get the permission forms. So, I took everything down. So, that's 300. So, thanks to you, we're back up to 429. So, realistically, I did over 729. Oh. It still bothers me oh because you're supposed to be 729, but no one helped me. So, I had to make my own mistakes and go back and redo it. But I'm right. showing people, hey, you know, someone who's labeled as handicapped, mentally disturbed, you know, retarded, whatever labels you want to throw at, look at what he has accomplished. So, yes, mm -hmm. unofficially, I have interviewed 729 people, but officially, it's 429. Right. But to answer That's your, amazing. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. 
Oh, no, I just said that's such an amazing accomplishment, you know, and the fact that you were able to, like, turn around and get back up and keep going. You know, we all have to learn as we go. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know, right? So right. now you know about permission forms and all of that, and look at you. You're like, okay, fine. I'll start over, and I'll do more interviews. So that's fantastic. And he answered your question, and, you know, I could have gave up after when I did 300s. Like, oh, you have to do it over. Right. Okay, I don't want to do it anymore. I could have been like one of those people, but I didn't. I pursued and I continued it. I did it better. You probably remember me as the uncensored kid. So, long story about that actress took my name, took the concept, so I see why I did. So I said, you know what? I'm paying for the Keith Angie Network name. I'm going to use it. So, instead of saying Keith Angie Network presents uncensored, it's now. The key Vanji network, and and the answer to your question was out beating her on the bush. About say where do I see myself in five years? I hope I get my own studio. Um, doing more group interviews, triple interviews, four interviews at the same time. Well, interviewing four people at the same time. And I know right. I'm putting your son to sleep. He's making faces at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I'm showing you, I'm taking each day at a time, right? And, but I don't know where I will be in, in five years, but we will see when we get to that point. Yeah. Ho hopefully but what a great good. goal to have your own. I love it. And it's a great goal. No, absolutely. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up our interview okay. segment, I have two questions for you. Uh, okay. One, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on LinkedIn, Stage 32, Facebook, Twitter? And when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, the first time, what made you say yes? And four years later, well, four and a half years later, when I re-approached you again, what was your first reaction when I reached out? And what made you say yes? And do you think it's better than the first time? Yes. Okay. So yes, people can follow me and find me at social media. I'm at the one Trinici on everything, Twitter, um, my fan page, um, Facebook's underneath my name, Trinicia, um, Instagram, uh, stage 32, everything's at the one Trinicia and it's the, and then the number one, um, and then Trinicia and, um, from the first time we did this until now, um, I thought awesome. Like, He's still going, and he's still doing these interviews, and I would love to come back and do another one. You know, now I have uh, two kids. Then I didn't, so yeah. it was easier then to find time, you know, to, to do it and to fit in. But um, I'm just honored that you asked me back on the show, and this has been fun. It's been different that my son is here now this time, so <laughs> um, it's a whole different feel this time. But I'm excited, and thank you for um, inviting me back. And lastly, what was that a question? Well, social media pug and many other ones, when I first approached you, what made you say yes? But you didn't answer oh. both of them. Yeah, what made me say yes is that, you know, you're trying to break boundaries and break stereotypes and, you know, you're putting yourself out there. And when someone puts their stuff out there, then other people should respond and put themselves back out there, you know? Then we feel like we're all in the same boat and we're in this thing together, you know? Instead of, um, you know, the world would be a scary place. So if we don't lift each other up and help each other to succeed and get to where we want to go, then, you know, what's, what are we doing this for? If we're not there for one another and helping each other reach our goals. So that's why uh, when you asked, I thought, genius, this is brilliant. He should show other people, all people that are labeled anything that we, you know, we're all in this together and we can we can get to where we want to be. Yeah, absolutely. Now, stay tuned. I have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up our interview segment, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Keith.